Hello, and welcome back to Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. I am Dr. Abstract, and if we go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com, we'll scroll on down, and we've been making what's here at the intro. We've been making this little app right here to demonstrate or introduce Zim. We've already done the dragging. It was a few videos ago. We've already done the components. And then we, in the last video, we did this arrow that follows the squiggle. Now we're going to move on to erasing the, uh, the tile and having it come back again. Cool, huh? In the last video, we also saw, if we refresh, control R, how these animate in. And we haven't done the final image there, nor the, the title there. All right, so let's see how we do in today's video then. We had an animate constant as well. If we open this up in a browser, we've turned animate false. So all the animations are turned off, and all the animates were animating from uh, alpha of zero going to the current alpha value. So that means if we turn off the animations, they'll all be at the current alpha, which is one for everything. We'll turn that off, and now the animations will go. We refresh this, and the animations are going. But we'd have to wait each time until we get to test. Okay, so part four, make a squiggle. Nope, part four, make tiles, make tiles, and hit tests. Okay. So, uh, making tiles. Well, a new tile. Now we'll need to refer to that tile later, so we'll put that in a const. Tile is equal to, I think in the example I might have called it pixels. Call it pixels just in case you're cross-referencing. Is equal to a new tile, and we will tile a new rectangle. <laughs> a rectangle, and we will say we want, well, let's give it a size, Ooh, 30 by 30 by, I have no idea, and a color, we'll make them all, I think the right corner is blue, we'll make them all pink, for now, and we'll do eight of them by four of them, five of them, might be too big, and we will dot center that, on what? Oh, yes, indeed. On what? Indeed. So, const fourth. Uh, uh, const fourth equals a new container. Stage width, comma, stage height, comma. We just centered it, but we didn't center it on fourth, right, because we had made the fourth. Now we've centered it there. It's not going to look all that good. We might want to give it um, better if we have some spacing. So that's spacing horizontally, spacing vertically. Now what the heck were we doing here with this comma? I don't know. Anyway, dot. Um, now we have to position this. Dot pose. And this one's going at the, at the bottom right. So 0, comma, 0, comma, or I should say right bottom. So right, comma, bottom. And then on the stage. There we go. So we take the fourth container, position it at the right, and then we're, we're centering our pixels on the fourth container. And we refresh here. And there we go. Sure enough, that uh, looks all right. How is that? Is that close to the original? Uh, not really. These look bigger. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight by four. They're bigger, and we've got eight by five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so these might be a little bit bigger. They might be 40. And we want eight by four and centered there. And let's see how that looks. Fine. We also put a border on it, so um, dark maybe. A dark border, that would take the default, I believe, of one pixel, might be two pixels. 
Okay, and the other thing we wanted to do is instead of all pink, we put in a random colors, yellow, green, orange, maybe. Not blue though, because it's on blue. Here we go. And we've got some random colors that change each time. If we wanted them in a certain series, we could put them in a series. We'll move that up a touch. Centered on fourth, uh, dot move, zero, so that's a move, zero, and we'll move up minus uh, 20. Can't be bothered to position it. We could position it and then, anyway, but we'll just center and then move it. Now at the bottom, we had a little guy. Okay, at the bottom, we called it eraser. Const eraser er, is equal to a new rectangle and uh, probably 40 by 40 by gray maybe and we will give it a dark outline as well we will dot pose this one though we're trying to get it down in the left hand corner maybe something like we'll try 30 30 comma from the left at the bottom on the fourth container. There, we're getting the swing of it here. What do you guys say? Yeah? You liking it? Vroom, vroom. Oh, we might want to place that, or we could even bump that over to be, first of all, is that right? It's, okay, maybe a darker, darker border. I think we put a little shadow on that just so we could see it. Dot sha, a shadow. We may even want to position this next to the pixels. Pixels dot x. So position the left hand side of it at the x position of the pixels, if we so desire. And we've added a little drop shadow. So there's the left hand side of it positioned at the x of the pixels. The drop shadow. We're also making this drag. Dot drag, like so, and now we can drag it, refresh, pick it up and drag it. I mean, yes. <laughs> can you say yes? You would not believe what I've gone through before in the HTML world to make something drag. As a matter of fact, I'm almost tempted to go look for it because it's over a hundred lines of code and I'm talking code that goes right across the whole screen per line. <laughs> Unbelievable. I had the Dean of HTML5, Matthew Potter, work on that code because I couldn't understand it. It was like so complicated at the early days of trying to drag in HTML5. Now we have to put have an event we'll use a press move event it's called to check to see if our eraser is hitting any of the pixels that's the eraser that we're putting the event on so we say the eraser dot on and we put the type of event press move comma call this arrow function af enter And in there, if you want, you can zog dragging. So this is the first time we've done this, so we might want to zog dragging to make sure that our event is working as we expect. And let's check her out. Wow, I can't tell the difference between the original. A little bit different, but there we go. We open up the console with an F12. We refresh our page, and we pick this thing up and drag. And you see when I, when I drag move it, press move, it's, um, it's saying dragging. Neat, huh? So that's a good one because all we have to do is check when it's moving if it's hitting. There's no point in us checking to see if it's hitting now. It's only when it, as it moves, that we check if it's hitting. So we'll delete that. And to do a hit test, it's a hit test method between the eraser and each individual pixel or rectangle in pixels. So we need to loop through pixels. But Zim makes that easy. Pixels dot loop. 
and each time we're given a pixel or a rectangle, whatever, and then we do the arrow function like so. So now inside this loop, we're given each pixel and we test each one. So we use a conditional if eraser dot hit test bounds. We'll just, they're both rectangles, so we can just check to see if their bounds, which are the rectangles around them, are hitting. That's an equation based test, which means it's fairly fast. So if eraser hit dot hit test bounds the pixel, then we could remove the pixel, for instance. Pixel dot remove. Now when we do that, watch what happens. So we'll also want to we are dragging, so the dragging itself will probably handle the stage.update, but just in case we'll put that in there. All right. So this is going to break. And we refresh here. We pick it up, and it says remove is not a function. Now, it broke sooner than I thought. Pixel.remove from is the, the full method that we want there. So we save that up and we refresh here and I start erasing. And you see that like it's kind of working but it's also giving me T is undefined and I have no idea what T is undefined. It's coming from Zim. It's somewhere in Zim. And it's like ugh. What's happening is this. Uh, as we drag and, and hit we're removing a pixel from what we're looping through. So we're looping through pixels, which relates to an index number. It, you know, it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 of the, the children of the container. But if we remove pixels, then all of a sudden the, the index numbers are broken and we start missing things and we start trying to operate on children that don't exist because they've been removed. Well, it's the index number. Uh, it's wrong. So basically, the answer is loop backwards. True, right like that. So on the loop, which is this bracket right here, the next parameter is do you want to loop backwards through the container? When you loop backwards through the container, it doesn't have to check uh, the higher up indexes. So as you loop backwards, you remove things, those indexes don't matter because you're looping down towards smaller indexes. So if that's complicated, I'm sorry I didn't explain it properly. <laughs> what is really nice is we know it happens. It's happened since 1995. This has happened to me. Anytime you loop through an array and remove things from an array, loop backwards. Otherwise, your index numbers are going to be messed up. Same with containers. So it's been happening back in when I was making CD-ROMs. It was happening in, all through Flash. And here it is happening again all through working on the canvas. OK, and we made it easy. Never has it been that easy to loop backwards. OK, loop backwards. And we refresh here. And now we can erase this. No error messages. And it all erased just fine. Cool, huh? Okay, so let's, um, let's instead of erasing it though, instead of removing it, we simplified that down because, in part because of this issue. Um, we didn't remove it, instead we animated it. So we will say uh, pixel dot animate, and here's what we're going to animate, but we also set it, it's alpha to zero right away, dot alp to zero like so. So we set its alpha to zero so it immediately goes to zero and then we animate it but we wait it. So wait, uh, I don't know, two seconds or something like that and then we animated the props of the alpha back to one. In some amount of time I think we just chose the default time of a thousand. Okay, there we go. Now, in this case, we don't have to loop back backwards, but it doesn't really do any harm. So there the alpha goes to zero, and then after two seconds, <laughs> nothing happened. 
I wonder why not. What do we do? Pixel, we set the alpha to zero, then we animate. Uh, waiting two seconds. Huh. Props come, did we save the file and look at the right file? Refresh. And there we go. And no error messages, but not coming back. Oh, do you know what it is? <laughs> Our animates turned to false. <laughs> Jeez, I could have. Well, I'm glad I thought of that. I could have been here for some time wondering what the heck was going on. Uh, way up here, remember, we turned animate false. That means no animations will run. Well, uh, that's okay. We can come down here and now we can turn them on to true. So if we wanted to continue to build here and test this animation, then we would turn animate back on to true. And I think we're fine. So there we are. All of the animations came, uh, they, they didn't go. And yet here we are. And now the animations come back. <laughs> Fun, huh? Cool, I like it. So good. That's that's that part done. We had a little message that popped in here and it said what? Drag the eraser, tile and hit test. Okay. So new label round brackets quote drag the eraser er, dot pose and this one was posed maybe 30 comma 30 from the right and from the bottom on container four, which is the fourth. Did you see me do that? Fourth. There we go. We save that. Let's bring that in so we can see it a bit better. Oh. <laughs> hey, we got it perfect. Now back here, drag the eraser. Mm, it looks like we brought that in quite a bit, more like 70. We also didn't bother with uh, trying to align our eraser. Where is it? There's the eraser, pixels.x. <laughs> had to come in a bit more, uh, plus, um, I don't know, 30, not 340. So, yeah, close enough, huh? Okay, so there we are dragging the eraser, but we're missing one thing up here, which said tile and hits. So big tile and hits up in the top there. Copy that. Uh, it's not even worth going back there. May as well just paste it here because that's where it's going to put it. Anyway, uh, this says tile and hits. Tile and hits. Uh, by the way, that's that's a string. You could you could go tile and hits dot to upper case like so. You can dot and uh, a method of a string directly to the string like that that will turn that to uppercase if you so desire. You know, it's positioned at the wrong place. So we want that to be something like 30 and 30 from the right. Oh, right was good. Right was right, but from the uh, from the top. Hmm. <laughs> How's that for laziness? From the top. So uh, we need the top in there, even though it is the default. We have to get to the fourth container. There we go. Note that it's all uppercase. Neat, huh? And we did that by dotting the to uppercase method of a string, that's raw JavaScript, to the string itself. All right, and uh, there we go. We're almost done. We've got uh, to animate this section in, though. So what do we need to animate here? I'll tell you what, let's go grab those other animations. They're right here. Third dot animate second dot animate all of this stuff we may as well pull this out and bring it to the end the end of it all paste <laughs> pasted it all indented at the wrong place 
back. So you, you can select everything. There we're selecting everything and doing shift tab and then it all comes back. And this is almost like another section completely, isn't it? What do we do with our sections? Oh, remember there. They're bookmarked. I could have could have gone there via the bookmark. Urgh. And we bookmark uh, this with an F1 and call it, oh, I don't know, part five, animations. Animations. Now, I think in the in the actual sample, we didn't do that. We animated each one right on location. Now, since the animation is just going, or animate's going false there, we no longer need to bring the animate true in there. It is true unless it's set to false. So that seems okay. There's the animation, second, third. Well, it's pretty easy to animate the fourth. As a matter of fact, it's so easy that maybe this could have been done in a loop or something. We could have looped. You want to practice some abstraction? Okay, you see what we've got here? We've got first, second, third, and this will be fourth right there. And they're all animating the same way, except this number is three, two, times one, and a weight, copy the weight here, comma, weight of times zero. Hmm, how about that? So props, alpha, all this stuff in between here now is exactly the same, except we've got a different number here, and that different number will match an index number. It's just they're on the first, the second, the third, and the fourth. So normally we would just put those four things into a container, loop through the container, and animate them. But uh, since we've already, I don't know, since we've got these names for them, first, second, third, fourth, alternatively we could do this. We can say uh, const, do you see what we would do? What data structure holds four things? const parts or whatever is equal to a new array with first, second, third, and fourth. So in normal coding world, not on the canvas, not when you have containers, uh, well, even on in the DOM, you've got divs which have children and stuff, so you could possibly loop through those. But uh, quite often, you would just throw the things that you have into an array like that, and then we can work with that array. Here in Zim, we have containers. It would be better to put all those things in one container, and then we can loop through the container. But we don't have to. We can do the array as well. That's fine. And now here's where we, uh, where we do our abstraction. So basically, instead of all four of these things, we want to abstract just one of them. So we're going to take this out. We're going to basically delete all the rest. We're going to take out one of them and put it here in a loop. So we will say uh, loop through parts comma, and each time we loop through parts, we're given the part, and this is an arrow function, like so, which is handy. So this is a zim loop function, whereas this is a zim loop method. They're pretty well the same thing. Whenever we loop through a container, we can use the method version. You don't have to. You could poop. <laughs> you could loop through pixels, comma, and be given a pixel. So you could loop, use the zim function loop, and loop through the pixels container and be given a pixel. But that way is a little bit longer to write than pixels.loop, and then you're given the pixel. But with an array, we have no choice. With an array, we can't go parts.loop, because we did not go and add the loop method to the JavaScript array class. It's frowned upon usually. So our framework does not go and change the base array of JavaScript. Instead, we make a global function called loop, 
which could be turned not global. You could have enforce a zim dot loop. But anyway, uh, never mind about that. So um, loop through the parts and be given a part. Now, way back when I said we abstracted that one bit right there, we abstracted this animation. All the rest we're going to delete. I'll delete in just a moment. Okay, so we abstract that out and put it in one place. Now, it's not first that we're animating, but instead each part that we animate. So if we loop through the parts, this will be first the first time. It will be second the second time. First the first time, second the second time, third the third time, fourth the fourth time. Wow, how did we work that one out? Okay, first the first time, second the second time, third the third time, and believe it or not, fourth the fourth time. Okay, super. So here we are in here, we're animating through the part. Now the other thing that changed was that, and that is the index number except we have not collected the index number. So we have to go back into the brackets, collect the index number i. That is the next thing that is given to us by a zim loop. What element in the array? Followed by the index. Followed by the total, if we want it, but we don't need it. We do need i. We need it right here. It's 0 the first time. It's 0 the first time, it's 1 the next time, it's 2 the next time, it's 3 the next time. What do you know? So all we need is this right here. All we need is this right here. Well, hang on just a second. I guess it's all we need is this right here. We do not need all of that. Okay, let's take a look. That is, hmm, I think it's 522 characters. 522 characters versus, oops, 522 characters versus 242 characters. So this is half the size, at least. Okay, so we get rid of all that, like so. Nice. Now, what the heck were we doing? Oh, yeah, we were animating each of those parts, right? So let's see if it works. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Did we turn animate on? No. <laughs> it's not going to work. Okay, there we go. And we save this. Uh, animate time in a variable is not, or in a constant here is not as important anymore. We would just put 700. 700, and uh, since they're right next to each other, that would have been fine. We refresh here, animate one, two, three, and four. Bingo, one, two, three, four. Oh, now, how you doing? I mean, hopefully, you're welcome to pause these videos anytime. This has been a long half hour, hasn't it? We're a little bit over, so. We've got this logo. I guess we better show the logo, huh? So we'll bring this in. Last thing here. It's the only thing we have left. And that's up here. We have to have a logo asset. Let's have a look. Creative coding. Here's some assets. We've got a car, we've got a learn, and we've got small. The other one was done in intro. So here is intro. Assets. There's the icon. And we'll copy this and paste it here. So now we have an icon.png, there she be. And we go const assets is equal to I in quotes icon.png and we go const path is equal to quote assets slash. So it's in an assets folder, sorry I can't make that bigger, in an assets folder or in the same directory as our lessons. So assets, and then we've got an icon.png. Now those don't do anything until they're passed in as assets, comma, uh, path, right there. So the next two parameters after outer color are the assets and the path. That will load that in for us. We come on down, 
F2, I'm F2ing, look at me go, part four, part five. And I guess we'll bring that in here, frame.asset round bracket icon.png.center. Let's put it right there on the stage for us. Refresh. There she be. It's coming up right away. It's too big. So we can dot ska that. 0.7 maybe. We'll center it. We will dot animate. And uh, in here we will say from. So we're going to animate it from is colon true. And uh, the props will be alpha colon zero and rotation colon uh, minus 720. So we're going to wheel this one around at us. I don't know if it matters. Maybe the minus doesn't matter. But we're going to animate its rotation too. Maybe it's scale as well. I can't remember. This will be fine, I suppose. And we'll put an ease of colon uh, back out. So this is um, the easing. And it'll go a little bit past where we want to rotate it to. And then come back to the zero rotation, which is its starting point, because we're animating from. And then the time we will make 1,500. But we also have to wait. So we're going to wait until all these things are done, which is something like animate time times four, I guess. All right. Sorry, we raced through that without much explanation, but we're running a bit lengthy on the clock here. Two, three, four. <laughs> all right. So what did we miss there? Did you catch that? <laughs> Do you like that? I think that's good for a laugh. All right. I think we better center reg that. Don't you agree? Center reg that. So we'll center the registration point on there. Don't leave your project with a windmill kind of thing. There we go. Ooh, a little bit long on the time. Let's uh, bring that back down to, well, probably one second. And I think that will do it for uh, for the whole building, huh? We're pretty darn close to what we had before. Oops, we didn't put a link on it. Uh, okay, you ready? Dot tap, and uh, we'll call this arrow function af. And inside the arrow function, we say zgo. It's a short little zim function. It's part of the Zim wraps. Uh, zid, zog, zum, <laughs> zzz, 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 go. And zzz, go will take you to a URL. HTTP colon slash, S colon slash slash zimjs.com. All right, now you can do that in, I don't know, some sort of Java, traditional JavaScript. There's a traditional JavaScript way. Go ahead, look at the docs. Look behind Zgo. See what Zgo does? It just wraps some window dot open, blah, blah, blah. I can never remember how to do it. I definitely remember how to do that. It only takes a second. So that's called a wrapper function. But if you really want to see the traditional JavaScript way of doing that, <laughs> be my guest. So we roll over that. Now we click it, and off it goes to Zim. Woohoo! Where we have been learning JavaScript on the HTML5 canvas with Zim and CreateJS. And uh, of course, you know, uh, lots of JavaScript uh, going as well. And maybe now, by the way, the volume, speaking of lots, last time still had lots of volume. I'm kind of hoping that the volume will be a bit less this time. There's a mother and daughter uh, with a wearable computer. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there it's working. It's down. No, it's smiling. Hi, it's happy. Ah! <laughs> Lights good. Ah, good. You got.
Are you checking it out? No. So um, it, it's wearable computing, and it's an app called Hangy. So there it is. Uh, say hello to these girls. Do you remember how? Hi. Greetings. Oh, uh, oh, uh, Greetings. <laughs> Greetings. Your robot has some glitches. Yeah. How's it going? So not too bad, huh? That's a happy face right there. Yeah. Ah, sort of the beatnik happening. Yes, I like it, I like it. Hello. Yeah. Right, there we go, hanging around. Now, all that video was shot from a tablet that was hanging on my chest or on somebody else's chest. So when that happens, when we're dancing, for instance, the people who are coming up to us as we were dancing, could see themselves in my chest as they were dancing. <laughs> it was very cool. Reminded me a long, long time ago, I went out to a, a goth club and I wore a big convex mirror and so as a medallion. So people would come up to me in the club and they'd be looking at, at my chest, which was a mirror at the time. So I've been doing this for a long time. That was pre Flava Flav as well. If anybody says Flava Flav, it used to bug me crazy. It's like, oh, I've been wearing medallions for years. Well, many people have worn medallions, but perhaps not as large as mine. All right. So, uh, great. Hey, that wraps up this lesson, lesson seven on building and the templates. In the next lesson, we move into working with some some controls, which is a lot of fun. So we'll see you then. Uh, by the way, uh, we, we did wrap that up kind of quickly, and I hope that you're all right with that. Uh, a number of the parts in there were repeating and we were running low on time, which we still are. <laughs> but there's this series called Code in Five Minutes with Zim. So have a look at that. There's over 20 uh, different things that we're coding in five minutes. And it gives you an idea of the types of things that can be made and some tips as we go. But it's also quick. Those are quick. There's also Zim Explorer. Those are slower. We spend lo longer times looking at things in Zim. These are building, uh, you know, we're building things together. And of course, you're welcome to go to in any of the examples. Uh, have a look on uh, CodePen, CodePen, lots of CodePen examples with Zim in it, with uh, documentation there. And uh, we'll catch you later. We'll see you next time for uh, Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. Ciao. Come join us at Slack. Zimjazz.com slash Slack. Bye-bye.